Welcome Climate Viewers, this is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at ClimateViewer.com uh, Climate Viewer 3D at ClimateViewer.org and WeatherModificationHistory.com uh, We've got a cooker going on and I figured I'd point it out to you guys, a little birthday surprise for me. Uh, down in Puerto Rico at Arecibo Observatory, they are currently boiling the sky. So I figured I'd point it out to everybody. Maybe if you're a ham radio operator or if you have a web SDR, especially if you have a web SDR in the area that can monitor this, please hit me up, Jim at climateviewer.com. I'd love to know about it. Um, and I'm going to give you all the details and facts about the Arecibo ionospheric heater uh, but first just remember that everything on climateviewer.com and all of my websites is free of charge open source you're free to remix any of the articles and material on there i simply ask for a link back and i hope that you will support me on patreon.com slash climate viewer or paypal or go fund me by the way yesterday was my birthday thank you to everybody who uh sent me birthday wishes it was kind of overwhelming um i got so many in, uh, messages in my inbox i can barely keep up with it um and i really appreciate it from all you and especially those who donated to uh, my video card uh fund um i'm about halfway there i'm gonna get a new video card so i can play some games blow off some steam so i appreciate it if you guys want to help out with that you know send me some money on paypal i greatly appreciate it but regardless, back to this Arecibo thing. So here's where we uh, first start out. November 2nd, 2018. Chris Fallen. Are you in the Southeast USA or Caribbean? Consider tuning your radios to approximately 5.125 or 8.175 megahertz starting Saturday, 11.3 for the possibility of tuning into the Arecibo high frequency campaign. Bonus for tuning in at 50 microseconds, ISR pulses, blah, 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 430 megahertz, perhaps offset by the high frequency. Um, so a couple people already responded to that, uh, and we've got some people who actually pulled it up on the, the carrier signal on their SDRs, um, and you can see the signal here. Uh, here's another guy in my own home state of South Carolina, showing a clear spike at 5.09 hertz, or uh, megahertz. So Arecibo is on, and uh, check check this stuff out. We'll go back to the to the Twitter and just feed in just a minute. But um, let's just get straight to what the Arecibo ionospheric heater is. So it's at the Arecibo Observatory and uh, many of you have probably seen this thing on 007 movies. Uh, there was a great fight scene in the catwalk on top of it. Here I am over on Climate Viewer 3D. And you can see that it's, you know, down in a bowl. It's a 305 meter uh, bowl with a, you know, gantry overhead. And what they did was, you know, this was a deep space telescope, radio frequency telescope listening for, you know, aliens and signs of intelligent life from other galaxies and stuff like that. But they decided to mount an ionospheric heater down in the bottom of the bowl. Now, there used to be an ionospheric heater on the site uh, for many years back to the 70s. And it was destroyed by a hurricane, and they've just recently uh, rebuilt it. And it's called the Arecibo Observatory Enhanced High Frequency Ionospheric Heater. Um, the details on that are available here on the sidebar. Maybe I can blow that up so you guys can see that at home. Antennas, six cross dipoles, 5.1 megahertz and 8.175 megahertz. They got three towers for each, uh, 25 meters tall for the 5 megahertz and 14 meters tall for the three, the 8 megahertz ones. 98 uh, 
meter cast grain screen hexagonal sub reflector 305 meter di pri dish primary reflector and 600,000 watts going into it for an effective radiated power of uh, 200 megawatts. So not as powerful as HARP, but still it's an ionospheric heater. Um, you know what they do. They boil the sky. They, you know, propagate waves. They make Whistler waves, ELF waves. But this one's unique because of its location. It's located right along the equator. So uh, most of these are not. And this is my worldwide map of ionospheric heaters. And you can see... The Arecibo Array is right here down Hurricane Alley in Puerto Rico. So a little bit more about the Arecibo Array. Here's a great photo um, that I created uh, showing the actual array. And you know, here's a photo of what the Arecibo um, Observatory looks like. And of course that 007 fight scene happened way up here in the air. Uh, but this is what the actual ionospheric heaters look like. Those are the antennas. And these little blue dots down here, these are people. So that just gives you an idea of the size and scale of this thing. And over here in the bottom corner is that cast grain antenna they were talking about. Let me blow that up for you. And you can see that basically they're hanging like a wire mesh net over top of it. And there's the antennas at the bottom. A schematic sketch of the mesh sub reflector suspended below the te telescope structure. It will be supported by cables from the towers drawing by Star Age Corporation. So this is the new enhanced high frequency ionospheric heater at Puerto Rico, which is currently on from November 3rd through November 9th. So it's going to be on all week long um, during the election. And there's a infographic that I created uh, for an article that I wrote called Ionospheric Heaters, How Harp Really Works. And I went through the major ionospheric heaters, um, you know, like High Pass, uh, the Arecibo one right here, lots of information on that. Uh, the Sura ionospheric heating facility in Russia, the Tromso one in Norway, um, you know, little infographics on this back when I was in Google Earth days. Of course, I'm not using Google Earth anymore. And of course, of course, the big boy harp and how it all works to create ELF waves with the ionospheric Alvin resonator. This is a very technical document. Uh, the video associated with this is on YouTube by the same name. Um, you know, Ionospheric Heaters, How Harp Really Works. It's well over 100,000 views. If you really want to understand how they work, watch the video. Uh, but basically, you know, this thing is going to be on all week long. Uh, you got multiple people listening in right now. So if you have a ham radio... Or if you have a web SDR and antennas to listen to this sort of thing, uh, send me an email at jim at climateviewer.com. I'd love to be able to listen in too. I did search the web SDR. Here, let me do that real quick. Web SDR. And you can see webSDR.org. They've got multiple different ones. And this is what they look like. You go to them and... They'll have a reception band. And you can tune the frequency and like such. So if you guys can find one in the area, that'd be really cool. Um, I'd appreciate it. And uh, maybe I can listen in too. But regardless, uh, the ionospheric heater at Arecibo will be cooking the sky all week long. And I hope that you guys will take a look into that. Um, and check out all the other ionospheric heaters in the, you know, around the world. Pretty fascinating topic. Um, I'm personally disgusted by these things. And Chris Fallon knows it. Uh, we've had our exchanges on uh, Twitter. But regardless of that, um, thanks for the heads up, Chris. 
And uh, Chris works at Harp in Gakona, Alaska. He's part of the University of Alaska. Um, so, of course, they just find this stuff fascinating that, you know, they're sending millions of watts of energy up into space to do atmospheric experimentation. But regardless, um, you can check it all out right here. Uh, lots of information on it. And here's where he says the Arecibo uh, campaign pretty much all day and night through November 9th, mostly at 5.1 megahertz. Uh, when there's local FOF2 is up, try 8.2 megahertz. I'm frozen in at UAF Harp. That's the actual Harp uh, Twitter feed right there. Uh, guy, but most of us admit I'm just a little bit jelly of the NAIC observatory can run high powered high frequency nearly 24 seven during their campaigns. Um, up at harp, it costs several thousand dollars per hour to run that thing. So, uh, Chris can't just turn harp on whenever he likes to anymore. They don't have that military budget behind it. And uh, the University of Alaska owns it now. Uh, but the Arecibo Observatory can apparently run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So keep that in mind when you're watching a hurricane pass by and uh, you're concerned about electromagnetic interference or somebody screwing with the thing. That there is an ionospheric heater down in Arecibo, Puerto Rico and uh that most people don't know about it so now you do and knowing is half the battle as they say so that's my little story uh for tonight um the arecibo heater will be cooking the sky all week um i hope that you can tune in and you know look for uh, if you got any kind of space weather modification or space weather monitoring sites uh check those out as well and uh, if you guys see anything odd, please point it out to me. I'll be the first to tell everybody. But um, that's the story for tonight. Arecibo's baking the sky all week long. And uh, there you go. We have another ionospheric heater cooking up the works. And uh, God, I wish these people would quit screwing with our ionosphere just for fun and for... Uh, for scientific research purposes. So that's my story for the night. I hope that you guys will check it out. Um, all the links will be in an article on climateviewer.com later. And again, I hope you guys will continue to support my work on uh, climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com. So, you know, if you want to go over there, his uh, Twitter feed is at ctfallen. And uh, give him a shout out. Tell him Jim sent you. Um, or go over to the University of Alaska Harps um, page. You know, they, they're they always fun to poke a stick at. Um, but, you know, the and the uh, NAIC Observatory is the Twitter feed for the Arecibo's uh, ionospheric heater. You know, if you don't approve of this sort of thing... Be sure to tell them, but remember, when you do, attack ideas, not people. <laughs>